Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Blasty Brain Cells and the host of Between Two Minutes on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on Local Voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented with Television. I'll talk about this week, um, soccer districts start this week. Um, of course, my brother, the host of History Now, Anthony Termina, just released the um, top 22 for soccer. Um, so if you want to take a look at it, they're at the blog at Sangalabay4650 at blogspot.com. Um, special shout out to Italian Guard, to, Ita- to um, Indian Heaven and Lake Orion. Um, you know, but um, let's look at our first, um, let's look at our main stories here. A lot of football I'll talk about here. Um, we're getting close to the nitty gritty of the postseason here. Um, Really, you know, some head scratchers, some shockers, um, some games I really wasn't surprised about heading into the week. And, um, you know, kind of really, the red is a complete mess. I mean, when you really look at it, um, all five teams um, having a chance to um, finish the year at two and two if everything works out. Um, But when you look at the red, I mean, it's a complete mess. I mean, like, you know, we got to break down both games. I mean, like, there was some controversy over at Oxford this weekend. Um, and, of course, West Bloomby and Lake Orion um, really didn't expect to see um, the offensive explosion um, that occurred in that game. So, really, you know, so really, and then we look at the final week of league play um, around the league for basically the red, white, and the gold. Um, and then... And then um, the blue, they still have a lot of league games to go. So let's look at, let's start off with the gold division first. I mean, like when you look at this division, this division's basically just about over. I mean, Avondale comfortably, you know, right now, I think in the driver's seat in that division, um, 41-3, no issue, blowing out Royal Oak. Um Basically, Avondale's offense is starting to come back into life a little bit, which is a good sign for Coach Bob Meyer. Uh, Avondale, you know, and I've really, I think I got to owe Avondale's athletic director an apology because I, I thought Cedar Springs was D5. Now, I did not know they were D3. So, Avondale, albeit they're also in D3. So, you know, kind of that, you know, you know, I kind of thought, you know, that loss to Cedar Springs really hurt them. And it, and it did. But but being in D3 and then see home a D2 team, um, you know, you really look at their losses, their quality of losses, and they're saying, okay, now it's maybe looking better and better for Coach Bob Meyer's team. So, you know, for Avondale, and obviously not having Cooper Rofrey and Justin Greer Sykes for both those two games, you know, really hurt Avondale. In both those games. So, despite that, you know what I mean? You know, they're they're right now clicking on all cylinders again. And they had that win against Ferndale, which is huge for them. That, then they knocked off Royal Oak, and then they played Berkeley. So, they get Berkeley this week. So, and Berkeley, I thought, well, I watched that game between Berkeley and Jackson Northwest. And, you know, Berkeley did not look good at all. They really did not. And we're going to break down what their issues are. Um... But Avondale right now is the cream of the crop of the gold. I mean, sitting really nice right now. Um, Ferndale coming off a 37 win against Pontiac. Um, really not surprised there. Uh, Pontiac really been struggling with the, um, you know, with their um, play as of late. I mean, like, they have not been the same since the um, Detroit Frederick Douglass game where they end up winning that one. So... There's some questions for them going forward uh, for Coach Wendell Jefferson and his team. Um, the injury bug has really hurt them. So we'll see. I mean, it is a mess right now uh, for Pontiac right now. They got to figure some things out quick considering they do close out the year with Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Harper Woods next week, which is going to be brutal. Uh, and then they got to play. Um, and then this week they play um, Pontiac. They got Royal Oak. And Royal Oak game looks very winnable mean but Pontiac they got some things to do to figure out figure some things out so we'll see what happens with them um Ferndale on the other hand um you know big win against Pontiac now they get they get to go back to Pontiac this week and play Pontiac Northern Prep which 
that could be that's a golden opportunity for them to get playoff points considering the Fighting Irish are undefeated right now. Um, but they're in D5. So really, if you're Pontiac Northern Prep, uh, really, if you're Ferndale, you know, Ferndale played Troy earlier in the year and fell 52-28. So it's a really difficult task if you're Coach Eric Royal um, getting ready for a very good Fighting Irish team. And to make it worse, they got to go down there. So, you know what I mean? So really go up here to, to Pontiac, play Northern Prep. So it's all the order for Coach Eric Royal and his team. I mean, looking at it, so we'll see what happens there on that one. But it is a daunting task if you're um, Coach Eric Royal to figure that one out, getting ready for that one against Ferndale. So, you know, so that'll be something to really figure out. So we'll see what happens there. Um, now we got to talk Berkeley. I mean, as I said, I watched the Jackson Northwest game on um, on Prep Sports um, on their YouTube channel. Um, they do a good job there. I got to give a shout out to them. They do a really good job. Um, when I look at Berkeley, I know the challenges that Coach Casey Humes faces. When they knocked off Royal Oak, you kind of thought everything was starting to turn around a little bit for them. You kind of thought that. So then they play Jackson Northwest, a team that's very similar to Berkeley, eerily similar to Berkeley. And... For them to get dominated up front the way they did and their defense and their um, offense really struggled against the Mounties' defense. Now, yes, Jackson Northwest nickname is the Mounties. That's not a good sign because when I look at the Bears, the fact of the matter is that they just they got dominated in that game. Jackson Northwest was the better team in that game. And... Berkeley just, they didn't have an answer. And it was shocking to me, considering, you know, you just came off, you, you played Ferndale, who's an experienced team, lost by 10, very competitive game there. And then you win an emotional game against Royal Oak last, I mean, last week, 14-7. And then you come and lay an egg against Jackson Northwest on a Saturday afternoon at noon. And it was on... It was on prep sports. It was on prep sports. So, on the prep. So, that's not a good sign. It really isn't. Ben Bullock's your best player. I mean, he had a touchdown in the game. He had a touchdown. He was basically your best player. So, I'm asking myself, where are the others? Where are the others? I mean... This team, yes, I know Coach Humes has got a a um a long way to go with this team. They sit at two and four. You got a tough one with Avondale this week. Then your schedule, it gets tough. It really does. So for Berkeley, they have to win this game. They they got to win this game. Because I think they close out the year Mass Knights Lampier. Um, which is a very difficult match for them. So, tough way to lose week one, that game against Jackson Northwest, on your home field. I mean, it was a tough way to lose that game. So, Berkeley, they've got some issues they got to fix. They really do. So, overall in this division right now, you look at the games this week, um, you know, Avondale and Berkeley technically are tied for the division, but come on. But come on. Avondale right now looks to be the cream of the crop in that division. They really do. Ferndale, I would say right now, is the number two team in there. Berkeley, I would say, is three. Um, number four, I would say, is Royal Oak. And number five is Pontiac. So that's really the order of that division. And... There's some interesting games going forward um, for this division, but this is the final week of league play with the division. I know Ferndale steps out of conference to play um, Pontiac Northern Prep this week, and that's a very difficult match for them. Um, the Fighting Irish, the way they're playing right now, I mean, they're putting 50 on almost everybody. It doesn't matter what division number you're in. I mean, they're still putting 50 on people, which is absolutely scary to say. So... We'll see how that one goes. I mean, like, but, you know, last week of league play for, last week of league play. So, 
I think it'd be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, let's go now to the blue. Um, see home basically the see home Troy game to me, and I'm gonna save that for my own segment here. Um, Farmington Bloomby Hills to me was not a surprise. Thirty five seven with that final. Um, Bloomby Hills, I mean, like you know, they struggle with Farmington's defense. Farmington looks like they're starting to get back in the thick of it a little bit. Anthony Bailey had a nice game. Um, but for Farmington, you know, interesting two weeks. I mean, they got Troy, then they got to play Lake Orion, and then they close out the year with Dearborn. Um, I think it's Dearborn, um, Crestwood they play to close out the year, which is interesting. Because I think Farmington could be a playoff team. I mean, right now, they're looking pretty good right now when it comes to D2. So when I look at Farmington, you know, and they're doing this without Julian Johnson, who's out for the year. Um, Anthony Bailey's done a nice job stepping in at quarterback. Um, they got a start, they got a player in the making. Um, I, I can't remember the guy's name on the back of my head right now. I really can't, but he's having a breakout year for Farmington. Um, he really is. Um, I got on my blog. I'm at second by force of blogspot.com. So I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. But Farmington right now is, you know, their defense is starting to get back in the thick of it. They're kind of out of the league race a little bit. Seaholm clinched at least a share of the league title. Um, but for Bluebay Hills, um, you know, making some progress. I mean, they kind of took a little bit of a step back, especially against a good Farmington team. Um, I, I just think that with them, it just, it's going to take some time for them to grow. And I know last year was a veteran heavy team for them. A little bit younger team this year. Um, so basically, I just think at the end of the day here, you really got to look at with Bloomby Hills is, you know, you got to be patient with them. I know Coach Dan Loria, you know, is going to stress patience, and I think he will. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. We'll see how that one goes for them going forward. But, you know, but Bloomby Hills for them to stay patient. Uh, you know, Troy Athens, they ran into a buzzsaw in Clarkston, 36-7. Um, Troy Athens defense. I mean, it's not good. Just not good. I mean, yes, I know Clarkson's a buzzsaw. Um, but, you know, they were down 34 nothing at half. I mean, like, and then, you know, the defense at least won the second half 7-2. But I bet you a lot of that Clarkson put their second, third stringers in. So, for Athens, you know, I don't know what to say about this team. I really don't. I mean, defensively. I mean, offensively running the misdirection, it's it the, the offense there. It, it's the um, you know, you got to look at the misdirection. You know, you're gonna have to throw out of it, which is not a good sign because predominantly in the misdirection, it's more of a running, running type of team. But when you are behind, like they've been so many times. You know, you got to wonder what the play calling is. You got to wonder what's going on. You got to wonder what's going on. Defensively, I don't know what to say about this team defensively because, you know, they had a week where they looked good against North Farmington, but the early games against um, where they were just completely obliterated by Seho, um, you know, Clarkson, you know, you kind of you kind of expected that with them, but... There were some games where, they, I mean, Farmington was a shock to me. I didn't expect them to get blown out the way they did in that one. Um, but still, I mean, Troy Athens defensively is the big issue right now. And I think the issue right now is um, what's their identity? I mean, what is their identity over there at Troy Athens? I mean, I, I don't know what their identity is. And, you know, the, re the numbers show it. I mean, the stats show it. I mean, you know, and... Right now, you know, you can't really judge it with that. You can't really judge it with Coach Tom Cook's team because, you know, the numbers, stats, they don't lie. They really don't. Um, and then you look at the the game. Um, I mean, North Farmington and Oak Park. That was an active game. I mean, it was a good game. I mean, like, 
it went up. It was a back and forth game. Um, North Farmington survived that one, nineteen to eighteen in Night Valley. North Farmington's been like, if I had to do a, a song for Coach John Herstein's team, um, it would be called "Hanging by the Moment," because North Farmington the last I think two weeks has been living on a prayer. I mean, like hanging by the moment. They had a defensive stand against Athens. Um, and then had to survive a defensive stand, and then they took the lead late in that one. So, for Coach John Herstein and his team, they've won four straight ever since the 0-2 start. I mean, the, the losses to Livonia Stevenson and Ferndale were just, the Livonia Stevenson loss is looking worse at the moment. It's work, looking terrible at the moment. Ferndale right now, they sit, I believe they're, I think they're four and two right now. And Ferndale looks to be maybe not a not as bad of a loss as you think it looks. Um But when I look at the Pat North Farms has been through, I mean that they've been through they've knocked off Blue Hills, they knocked off Troy Athens, um, survived Oak Park. They still gotta play Troy. You still got to play Seaholm. Um, Seaholm's this week, and I know that's going to be on TV 10 over there at Farmington. That should be a fun matchup. I mean, considering we know the next two matchups for North Farmington are going to be against teams that run the Veer. I mean, Seaholm, <laughs> they run the Veer. You know, Penn Roberts having a nice year for Seaholm. They run the Veer, but Adams is the masters of the Veer. They are the masters of that of that Veer offense, and they got to go to Adams. So that should be really interesting to see how that how that matchup goes between North Farmington and um, you know, having to deal with the Veer offense for two straight weeks, and then they close out the year with Troy. So you know, so that'll be we're gonna find out what North Farmington is made of this week. We're gonna find out, but right now they're clicking on all cylinders right now. For Oak Park, they got to win this week against Lapeer. They have to win this week. Because if they don't, they can kiss the playoffs goodbye. I mean, really, when I look at Oak Park, um, some really tough losses that have hurt them. I don't know about the wins or the the, the wins are going to help them. But when I look at Oak Park, their situation, I mean... It's kind of really difficult to say with them because, you know, you don't know what type of team Oak Park is. You know, they might, I mean, like, but last few weeks, they've been very competitive. I mean, they've been really competitive. I mean, they had that heartbreaking one-point loss in North Farmington. You know, that says a lot about their competitiveness. I mean, they were leading that game late. Then North Farmington scored a touchdown, got the extra point, and that was your ballgame. Really was. So we'll see. I mean, Oak Park, tough spot right now, but a golden opportunity awaits them with Lapeer this week. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, we will really see how the Knights um perform in that game against um Lapeer. So we'll see how that one goes there. And the game we gotta talk about is this was a shocker for me. Cause I did not expect this score. I mean, last week I picked Troy to win this game because I thought their defense would show up in this game and I thought Noah Ori would play really well in this game. Neither were the case. You got to give Seaholm credit here. I mean, it looks to me like this team has not lost a beat. And they look ready for that gauntlet coming up. They look ready. I mean, they knocked off a really good Troy team. I mean... I honestly thought after Troy's blowout win against Oak Park that this team turned the corner. You know, that they made a statement win. That those losses to Lake Orion and Pontiac Northern Prep, you know, that got them gearing up for this game. It didn't. And boy, it didn't. 38 to 7 was the final in that game. <laughs> 38 to 7. How do you explain it? How can you explain it? Other than Troy just got dominated. 
They just got dominated on all phases. Offense, defense, special teams. They had no answer for the veer. I mean, they, I mean, like, they, I was shocked to see how, I don't understand this, considering you have an offensive line, a, a lineman in Lucas Tick. You have a linebacker in Greg Tester. And then you have Jalen Peacock in the secondary. And then the offense, you know, they shut down Noah Uri. They shut down Lucas Tick. They shut down Jalen Peacock. I mean, Troy's got players on this team. But Seaholm, you know, people look at Seaholm and say, okay, this is a team that lost the Keeney brothers. You lost, they lost a lot of talent. They lost, they lost so much talent from last year's team. And everybody thought, okay, Seal was going to take a down year. Boy, they haven't lost the beat. Now, people are going to say, well, with Seaholm as, this team's clicking. And they are. But there's some people that say, well, what? Seaholm hasn't been tested yet. They've been somewhat tested. I mean, I thought Troy would test them. Now they take on North Farmington. Should be an interesting game at Ron Holland Field. I thought Farmington would test them. They did. That game was 14-6. to But then the next two weeks for what for um, Seaholm, West Bloomfield and Groves. Those are going to be the two games that are going to tell a lot about Seaholm. Is those two games. I mean, West Bloomfield arguably played their best game of the year against Lake Orion. I mean, they played their best game of the year. And then Groves, right now, the team that's clicking on all cylinders right now. I mean, you got to worry with Groves, are they going to be battle-tested enough? Because you look at Groves, yeah, they were tested early. I mean, playing UD Jesuit, knocked off West Bloomfield. Then he had that win against um, Stony Creek, Rochester, and um, Harper Woods. But now you got to wonder, is, is Groves battle-tested enough? That's the big question I have for them, but that's for the white segment here. But for Seaholm, just the way that that team has not lost a beat says a lot about them. Now, I get there's a lot of people saying, well, what if Seaholm was in the white? They don't have this undefeated record. Where would you rank if Seaholm was in the white? It's a good question. Really good question. Because I think it would have really interesting games with Stony Creek. Really interesting games with Rochester. Really interesting game with Harper Woods. I mean, that could, those three games are 50-50 games. I don't think they would have an issue with Southfield. Um, Groves, that would be something. That would be something. Hypothetically, if Seaholm were to move up to the white next year, would they be competitive? That would be really interesting. Would be really interesting to see if that were the case. But right now, Seaholm's clicking. Now, albeit they're going to say, well, the schedule is not, not as strong. Not exactly. Because Farmington right now, I would say the good win for them. Troy's a good win for them. Um, and then, but the two games you're going to really, there's three games you're going to really know a lot about West, about, See home is going to be North Farms and Ron Holland this week. Then West Bloomfield next week. And then Groves in two weeks at Beverly Hills. Both two of those games are on the road. So we're going to find out how good Sea home is. We're going to really, really find out. For Troy, you know, when I look at them, I really thought the Lake Ori Northern prep games really Prepared him for that one. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. I mean, you know, you got to, it's hard to explain, you know, Troy right now, considering, you know, they've had two tough weeks and then they had that big, impressive homecoming win against Oak Park. Um, it's kind of really hard to explain it. I mean, I was left stunned looking at that score. 
and just didn't expect that to happen to them. I mean, my goodness. Really didn't. So now with Troy, you know, they're right now on the, they're barely in the postseason field right now. I think, they're, I think they have the last spot right now in Division One right now. So when I look at Troy's schedule coming up, you got North Farmington there. You got to play Athens. And then you have Farmington this week. So your final three games are league teams. And I think the easiest of those three games are gonna, is going to be Troy Athens, your arch rival. So for Troy, there's an opportunity here to get some wins, you know, to finish to win out. If you win out, you're in good shape. If you lose, if you, if you go 2-1, and one, I think you're okay. But there's got to be a lot of things that got to go right for Troy if they want that, if they want, you know, for them to be in the postseason. If they win out, I think they're in. If they go two and one, get some help. It can get some help from other teams. <laughs> but one and two or zero oh and three, they're done. That's really what it is for Troy. So overall, I think right now, see home they clinch their share of the league title. North Farmington right now looks to be the second best team. Um, Troy, I think right now, to me, looks like they're the third best team. Actually, Farmington's the third best team. Troy, I say fourth. Oak Park, fifth. Troy, Athens, sixth. Bloomfield Hill, seven right now. So that's my take on the um, blue division. I mean, when I look at it right now. Let's go to the white now. I mean, the white had a really interesting week. Um, basically, you know, we're going to talk the um, Stony Creek Rochester game um, in a minute here. Um, Harper Woods had no issue with A&T, 49-6. to um, I don't know if Ryan, if Nate Rushell's back. I, I don't know if Nate Rushell's back for Harper Woods. If he is, then that might explain a lot. It looked like Dakota Garrett had a big game. Grant had a big game. Harper Woods, this was the team that I thought was expected heading in the year. There's a reason why I start. I had Harper Woods ranked number one to start the year. Because of their offense. Because of their experience. <laughs> now, their defense has not played well until that game against A&T. Now, I think it's in a, I think a lot of that's A&T, but some, a lot of that's Harper Woods. Considering they're at home, um, just Harper Woods, the way they played, um, you know, they're right now in the thick of it in Division 4 right now. They're in the thick of it. Now, are they in the top bench of the of the division uh, in Division 4? Probably not. I think they're in the middle of the pack, what I've heard. Um, But for Harper Woods, I mean, their schedule, it really lightens up. I mean, after Rochester. I mean, they got Rochester, then they got to play Pontiac, and then they close out the year with Detroit um, East English Village Prep. So... For Harper Woods, there are some wins available for them. There really is. For a &T, you know, how do you explain it? I mean, top matchup coming up with Groves this week. Then you got to play, you know, you've already played Clarkson. You've already played West Bloomfield. Um, I got to find out who they have in week eight, but. You know, it's not going to be an easy game for them. Um, and then they close out with Detroit Renaissance. So, for a and really, really tough. Actually, actually, I do know. They got Ferndale on, that, on week eight. They got Ferndale week eight. Which, that's a very interesting matchup. And I think Ferndale's got a chance to win that game. But, when I look at a and I mean, yeah, you lost a lot of talent. You have a new coach in there. It's going to take some time to put the system in. I mean, like, you know, but still, how do you explain it? How do you explain it? I mean, like, the fact that you've only scored 20 points in league play. That says a lot right there. That says a lot. 20 points in league play. That's bad. That's really bad really is. So, 
So we'll see what happens going forward for them. We'll see what happens. Groves 35, South Lion nothing. Not much of a surprise there. Groves um, offensively, defensively, special teams had a great game. Ryan Counts has been steady Eddie for Coach Friend of Flaherty. Um, Sanders had a touchdown. Um, they had a defensive score, special team score. Groves is clicking on all cylinders. The only thing I'm worried about with them is their um, it's a competition. See, I think Seaholm's going to give them probably their toughest competition heading in the final three weeks, and because their next two games are A&T and Royal Oak, and I'm going like, oh boy, this is going to get bad for both those teams. Seaholm is probably the only team that I think could give them problems. They could give them problems, especially with that Veer. But Groves will be motivated. They're going to be clearly motivated for that game. They really will be. So, not a lot to say about Groves, especially right now, especially because they're clicking on all cylinders right now. But I'm very concerned about the lack of games that they haven't been tested. I mean, they haven't been tested, honestly, you know, and I think since the West Bloomfield game, since week two, they haven't really been battle-tested. Other than that, I mean, they've really blown everybody out that they've seen this year. So, I've got some concerns when I look at Groves. Um, you know, there are some big-time concerns. It's not like, you get, then you got to wonder with Groves, how are they do in the red? Because I'll guarantee you that right now, I don't think they're undefeated during the red. I mean, they've already beat West Bloomfield. I mean, they could give Clarkson problems. They could give, like, Orion problems. Um, Adams, definitely problems. And then Oxford. I think they could give all, all those teams problems. Do I think they beat all five of those teams? Probably not. But right now with Groves, I think right now that they're clicking on all cylinders right now. But I am very extremely concerned about with them is their lack of competition right now. Because you know for sure when they get in the playoffs, they're going to have to run into Warren D. South. They're going to have to run into him. So, right now, they're, they're a team right now that's clicking on all cylinders. But I am very concerned about the lack of the, the, um, the schedule right now. Because it's really softened up for them. And I think they're starting to maybe take teams a little more lightly, which is a little bit of a concern going forward. So, we'll see. We'll see. Then I think the game of the league was Rochester and um, Stony Creek. Crazy game here. I mean, this went overtime. Um, Stony took a 7 up lead. Rochester answered. Um, then Stony Creek took a 14-7 lead. Rochester answered again. Went overtime. Rochester took a 21-14 um, lead on a Jack Lauer touchdown. Um, and then Stony Creek answered. Um, Scored a touchdown, <laughs> but decided to go for two. Um, now, here was some controversy here in this play. Um, there was some controversy here. Um, how do I explain this? Is Stoney's going, they're in the, um, they're in the pistol formation. Um, Sam Fogler takes the snap off Wildcat, and he dropped the ball initially. He dropped it initially, got his own fumble back. Um... And then just piled into the end zone. You know, I know Rochester fans say, well, was he down on contact? Was he down? Um, they said he wasn't. Got into the end zone. Stony Creek um, coaches and players stormed the field and celebrated. Uh, um, Rochester was just in shock and disbelief. And I know Coach Eric Vernon was not happy with the officiating. So, it ended up being a... Big win for Stony Creek, 22-21, <laughs> behind Fogler's um, heroics for Stony Creek. And when I look at Stony Creek, having Peyton Rumbler back is a big deal for Stony Creek. It is a huge deal. And you know who else benefits from it? It's Spencer Beekman. Because you look at that, if you look at that line combination of Beekman and um, Rumbler, that's been a combination that Stony Creek fans Wanted to see before the season started. But Rumber got hurt. Missed, um, I know he missed the Lake Orion game. Missed most of the season. Came back, I think, 
in their homecoming game, they came back. I mean, he came back from an in. He came back, had a big game. Stony Creek's now won two straight games, um, which is huge for them and their playoff hopes. Um, it looks like Coach Rick Powell settled on a quarterback. Um, running game, Sam Fogler is really starting to pick things up. Their defense is starting to improve a little bit, which is a good sign. Um, so really for Stony Creek, it's just for them is keep winning. I mean, keep winning. I mean, you got Adams this week. You got to play Avondale in two weeks, which that should be a really interesting game. And then you got to play New Baltimore Anchor Bay to close out the year. Interesting coaching matchup between um, Coach Powell and Coach Gioni. Um, so, it, actually, take it back. They play Ann Arbor here on. I, I thought I was thinking about that last year's thing. They play Ann Arbor here on to close out the year. Um, so, that's a very interesting match. Ann Arbor here on. Solid team. I mean, good team in the SEC. Um, so, we'll see what happens. I mean, Stony Creek right now is a team that's clicking on all cylinders right now. And then let's look at Rochester. This loss really damages their postseason hopes. It really did. Um, now they can, if they can, I mean, they sit at three and three right now. Actually, they're two and four right now. I mean, if they win out, you know, they got a good chance to win out considering, you know, they got, if they can knock off Harper Woods. Um, if they can knock off Harper Woods, um, that says something right there. <laughs> um. Give me for all the coughing here, weather change and everything like that. But um, when I look at Rochester, their playoff hopes, you know, rely on knocking off Harper Woods. It's a big game for them. Then they got to play, um, they close out the year Wall Lake Northern. Then they got to play Berkeley. Um, so I think for, if Rochester can win this game against Harper Woods, then... I think, honestly, they can really maybe sneak in the postseason. But it's going to be tight. It'll be really, really close for them. I mean, like, a lot of the teams that they beat got to help them. I mean, they knocked off a and They knocked off Frazier. Um, those are two wins for them right now that are helping them right now. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, but right now... You know, for Rochester, it's just they've got to get, I mean, like, they've got to, they got a big one. They got to focus on Harper Woods this week. And for Coach Eric Vernon, that's where it's got to be. So we'll see what happens. Over on the way, I think it's Groves, Harper Woods, Stony Creek, Rochester, and then AT. So that's my take right now in that division right now. I mean, right now, um, Stony Creek looks to be in playoff position right now. Um, Harper Woods is locked in D4. Groves, I think, is locked in D2. I mean, Rochester's a team that's on the bubble right now. So we'll see what happens. Then let's go to the red. Clarkson, no issue with Athens, 36-7. Um, just getting ready for that Lake Orion game this week. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but Clarkson's clicking on all cylinders right now. Wachesco's getting comfortable at quarterback. Bowman Twins are playing really well right now. Brady Beck's playing well right now. Their wide receivers are solid. Defense has been a little shaky, but last two weeks they've been playing really good. 20 points allowed in the last two weeks. Um, considering, you know, that that's pretty good. So, it'll be an interesting match with Lake Orion. It'll be really interesting. West Bloomfield 49, um, Lake Orion 41. When I look at this game, I asked myself this question. Tale of two games. I mean, Lake Orion played. I mean, like, um, I mean, like, I mean, like, Lake Orion offensively played really well in this game. I mean, they offensively, despite, you know, but the defense looked bad, just bad. Missed tackles. Couldn't get to the quarterback. No pressure at all. You let Eliza Jackson and Cam Flowers go nuts. You let Josh Tate run all over you. I mean, how do I explain? How do I start to explain this with Lake Orion? How do I explain this? 
I mean, 35 points allowed in the second half? There's just no words to really look at this. There's really no words. I mean, the missed tackles, the missed assignments, the easy touchdowns they allowed. I mean, you let... There's just no words to explain that defensive performance. There really isn't. I mean, you let Camp Flowers go off for 70 yards, I mean, for, go off for about 60 yards. Just in a reverse. You know, and then the first quarter, the play that, um, going to get me really upset was you were there for the sack but just but missed the tackle and then you let Bo Jackson throw the ball to Eliza Jackson go 75 yards. And then three plays later they're in the end zone. The defense put the offense in some terrible spots. Really did. Tier Hill had a nice game. He did a nice game. I mean, Kyle England was solid. I thought Kyle England played well. I really did. I mean, Jackie Vasquez, he was solid. Um, You know, but you can't have a fumble. You know what I mean? Vasquez fumbled the ball. That changed the entire complexion of the game. When he fumbled the ball on the kickoff. And then T.R. Hill throwing a, throwing a, um, a tough interception. You know, and that led to West Bloomfield's final score. So, that game, when I look at that game for Lake Orion against West Bloomfield, one on West Bloomfield's part, that was their best game they played all year. That was their best game. Because, you know, the last few weeks, West Bloomfield has not played to the Lakers' standards. They really have not. And for them to have an offensive explosion like they did, Cameron Flowers played well. Um, Elijah Durham played well. Bo Jackson played well. And Jamal Shakespeare played well. Josh Tate played well. Offensive line played well. I mean, you know, yes, you got concerns defensively. But I really think that game was more about Lake Orion than it was West Bloomfield. Now, albeit that game really saved West Bloomfield's season. That game did save their season. And when you look at West Bloomfield, their next three games, they got Oxford, then they got Seahope, and then they got, they got to go to, um, on the tip of my tongue here, I mean, like, um, it's on the, Roseville. So, for West Bloomfield, they knock off Oxford. And hypothetically, if Lake Ori knocks off Clarkston, we got a five-way tie at two and two. I don't think I've ever seen that. I really don't think I've ever seen that. Where five teams could fit, all five teams could finish here two and two. I still think, seriously, all five teams are going to make the playoffs. All five right now are in playoff position at the moment. Back to Lake Orion. Um, you know, this defense has got to get fixed quick. Considering what they got this week. And this is the worst case scenario for Lake Orion. Homecoming. Clarkston. Mental mindset. Where is it with this team? I mean, there's some question marks now for Lake Orion where they're at right now. Offensively, I don't see any issue. There's no issues offensively. It's defensively is where the problem is right now. Considering you're going you're gonna to have to look at Alec Prochensko at quarterback. You have both Bowman twins. Running the ball, you have 
a couple proven wide receivers, which includes Brady back. I mean, where is this team mentally right now? Where is this team mentally? That's the question I have with Lake Ori. And then you have homecoming, which is honestly to me it's a distraction. Because we don't know where this team's mindset's at. We really don't, considering what happened that game. So, Lake Orion, they got some things to figure out quick. Because they got Clarkson on that schedule still. You got Farmington, who's up and coming. And you got Celine on that schedule. Tough stretch. We'll see. Offensively, they got the they got the firepower. I am extremely concerned about this team mentally, especially on the defensive side of the football. But mentally, this team I'm really concerned about. And it's homecoming week. That adds to the biggest. That adds to the worry. So, and then there's Clarkson. And by and my goodness, I can tell you. I am extremely concerned about that match for Lake Orion. Extremely. And then we have Adams and Oxford. Um, this was a crazy game. I mean, Adams took a 17-6 lead in the fourth quarter. Oxford responded behind Jack Hendricks, um, who scored um, he threw for two touchdowns. I mean, one one was a good ball to Luke Johnson. Um, so the other one, was, there was a little bit of controversy in there. Um, and... There was some film, you know, that was um of that of that um of that catch by Jake Champagne, um where, you know, where his right foot kind of slid a little out of bounds, but he kind of tiptoed it in. The left foot was clearly in the yellow, um, and I get in high school football you got to have one foot down. The first referee, the um, near referee, said um he was out in, it was out of bounds incomplete. But the other touch, the other referee overruled him and ruled it a touchdown. So, you know, so it was really interesting. The, I mean, like, so I could see why Adams fans are really upset right now. But if you're Oxford, you know what I mean? Like, this is another big win for you in a special year for you. This is starting to become a special year for you. Um, Considering what they got coming up. I mean, they got West Bloomfield this week. You got play. They got Oak Park next week. And they got Macomb, Dakota coming in. So if you're Oxford right now, you're sitting in a nice spot right now. You win, you you, clinch, you at least close a share of the red title. You lose and Clarkson loses, we got a mess. And, you know, playoff points, you know, right now, when I look at playoff points right now between these five teams, Lake Orion right now is 58. Clarkson, Adams, Oxford all at 57. West Bloomington at 48. So that's really interesting right now. And I think a lot of that you got to look at is the non-league opponents. I mean, Northville right now sits at three and three. Stony Creek sits at three and three. Troy sits at three and three for Lake Ory. You know, you look at with Adams' case, you know what I mean? You look at Romeo's two and four. Rochester's at two and four. Um, Clarkston. I mean, like with Clarkston, you know, I'm looking at teams that you beat. You know what I mean? You know, I know that um, Clarks has played Belleville. I mean, the win against a and um, A&T's right now 0-6. Athens right now is 1-5. Um, so, those are their strength to schedule non-conference, you know what I mean? Or non-league wins. Um, West Bloomfield, Chippewa Valley getting a big win against Utica Eisenhower. They sit at 1-5. And, um, and then um, A&T, obviously, for them. So, really... That's why you look at right now, Lake Orion right now being a point ahead of those teams right now is because of, in the playoff points, it's because Northville's 3-3, three and three, Stony Creek's 3-3, three and three, Troy's 3-3. Three and three. You know, and everybody else right now, right now is at 2-4 and four lower. So, you know, so really that's why the playoff point scenario is what it is right now. Now, I still believe all five teams are getting in the playoffs. And I think, honestly, you know, all five teams have a great case to at least get to a regional final. So, 
we'll see how the state does. I mean, but if if all, if all five teams keep winning, especially in weeks eight and week nine coming up, um, then I think honestly, um, then I think honestly, you know, we can see what um, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how what happens. I mean, but I think all five, I still believe in my gut, all five teams are gonna make the playoffs. So we'll see what happens. Okay, now let's look at week um week seven games this week. Um, gold games. We got Berkeley and Avondale. I'm taking Avondale on this one. Um, I just think Avondale's got too much firepower. Gonna, I think offensively, Cooper Wolfrey, Justin Greer Sykes, they're gonna run that wing T. Um, basically, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how this one goes. But I think Berkeley will be in it for about maybe a quarter, maybe a half. But I'm gonna take Avondale on this one. I just think the Yellow Jackets have um the offensive firepower to do um you know to make some noise and make some significant damage in this game. So we'll see in that one. I got Avondale in that one over um Berkeley. Um Royal Oak and Pontiac. Um these are two teams that are really struggling. Both teams sit at one and five, oh and four in the division. Um this game's at Royal Oak. Um I'm gonna take Royal Oak in this one. I think the Ravens their defense has just enough. Um, they have just enough in this one. I I think with them, it's going to come down to it. Can Royal Oak, um, you know, defensively shut down Kanye Donaldson? Um, obviously, Donaldson's had a <laughs> rough start, but also Pontiac in general has had a really rough year. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. I think that one's going to come down to what I think Royal Oak will... Um, Knock off Pontiac. Um, I don't think this is a blowout in any ways, but I just think they're gonna. I think I just think it's gonna be like maybe fourteen points. I could see that. So we'll see how that one goes there. Um, Ferndale taking on Notre Dame Prep. This matchup is gonna be tough for Ferndale. Notre Dame Prep they got firepower on both sides of the ball. Ferndale's got a veteran team, but I'm not sure if the strength of schedule is gonna prepare them enough. So I'm gonna take the um, Fighting Irish in this one. Plus they're at home too. Uh, it's also their homecoming over at Notre Dame Prep as well. So you know it'll be a happy homecoming I think for Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, being a good Ferndale team, um, it'll be really interesting to see. I'm curious to see how Coach Eric Royal prepares this game. Um, but I, I just think that the Eagles are I, I think Eagles are in trouble here uh, against the Fighting Irish. So I'm taking Pontiac Notre Dame Prep in that one against Ferndale. Um, let's go to the blue games here. Um, you look at, of course, um, you know, on this one here, um, you got, um, you got, you got an interesting one between Troy Athens and Bloompia Hills. Um, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes because I think when I look at this matchup, these are two teams that have really struggled. They have really, you know, Bloompia Hills is, you know, offensively, they've struggled all year. Troy Athens, their problem is defense. Same thing with Bloompia. Both their problems have been on the defensive side of the football. That's why they're struggling. is because their inability to stop the other. Inability to stop teams defensively. That's really what the problem is. So when I look at this matchup here, and I ask myself this, whose offense do I trust in this game? Do I trust the misdirection of Troy Athens? Or do I trust the spread offense of Bloomby Hills? Game's at Bloomby Hills. I'm going to take Athens as one. I, I trust their athletes. I trust Athens as athletes. I trust the Dunlap brothers. I trust Nathan Pickett. Um, Athens has really been struggling all year long under um Coach Tom Cook. Um. I know they got Troy coming up next week, but in this one, I'm going to take Athens over Bloopy Hills. It'll give them some confidence heading in that one going forward there. Next, we have Lapeer at Oak Park. Lapeer is an interesting team. Really interesting. 4-2 in the Valley. She came off a two-touchdown loss to Grand Blank. Um, Lapeer's got a new principal in Jason Larson. Um, a new coach in Anthony Merlo. Um, basically, Lapeer is basically 
I think an OA team in the Lakes, in the Saginaw Valley. And I really think right now with the way Lapeer is playing, you know, you don't know what you're going to get with Lapeer. You really don't know what you're going to get. Um, I mean, like, Lapeer still got to play Davison. They close out the year with Davison. They just lost the Grand Blank. So, you don't know what to expect with them. And then on the other side, you look at Oak Park. They need a... The Pierce, the perfect opponent for Oak Park. Because, one, they're a Division I school. Two, you know, could this be a test for the future? I mean, like, when you look at, and I've said this year a year ago, you know, when you look at expansion of this of this great league, I think, honestly, Lapeer would be a great fit for this league because of the rivalries with the Northern schools. You look at Lapeer's rivalry with Oxford. You look at Lapeer's rivalry with Clarkston. You look at Lapeer's rivalry with Lake Orion. I mean, and even they have some rivalries with the Rochester schools, particularly Adams, Stony Creek. You know, Lapeer would be an interesting fit for this conference. Now, I'll be, yeah, people are going to complain about the travel. But we're going to find out. I mean, Lapeer's got to make the travel to the Night Valley for a 6 p.m. kickoff. We'll see how Lapeer is when they make that travel down um, I-75 to um, I-75. I mean, like, it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. I mean, you know, I think this would be a perfect audition for Lapeer if they were to make the move to the OA. Because, as mentioned, you know, your new your new principal of the Lake or went to Lake Orion. You know, he's been at Lake Orion. Your assistant coach, your um, new head football coach, was at Sony Creek last season. So this is going to be really interesting, and I think it's going to be a good test. So in this game here, I'm going to take Lapeer here over Oak Park. I think Lapeer is going to come in. They're going to come into Oak Park. They're going to make an impression. And I really think the impression is going to surprise a lot of people. And I think the Lightning go in here and damage Oak Park's playoff hopes. Um, now, Oak Park's going to and I'll love, is going to bring some speed. They're going to bring a lot of speed in this match. So this will be an interesting match between a team that is really physical to the ball against a team that really likes to run a lot. So this could be a tight game. I mean, this could really be a tight game between these two teams. So we'll see how that one goes. See how that one goes. Um, Farmington and Troy. I mean, this is going to be interesting here. Um, in this one, I'm going to take Farmington here in this one over Troy. Because I just think that, I don't know where Troy's head's at after what happened last week against Seahill. Farmington, big win against Boombie Hills. It'll be a big test for them taking on Troy. It's going to be a tight game, but I, I really think the Falcons have a great chance here to, um, you know, I think Farmington's got a great chance here to really increase that resume a little bit. Um, as we head into the final two weeks of the year. Um, see home at North Farmington. This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. I, I think see home right now, the way that they're playing, this is their biggest test going up against North Farmington. Team that started off 0-2, um, 1-4 straight. Um, I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the Falcons and I'm going to take the, actually I'm going to take the Maples in this one I'm over the um, Raiders. I think it'll be really interesting. It'll be a tight game, but we'll see what happens. I, I just think that Farmington, um, I think that North Farmington, they're going to, you know, it'll be a tight game. It'll be close, but I don't know if they'll be able to handle the veer um, like what Seahome will do here. Um, but we'll see. We'll really see here in this one. In the white, we got Harper Woods at Rochester. Rochester needs this game badly. They need it basically to save their season. Um... Harper Woods, they're clicking on all cylinders. They're starting to have that big one against A&T. Um, I'm taking Harper Woods in this one over Rochester. I, I think it's going to be tight, but I think they're going to sco score a late touchdown. I think Dakota Grant gets it. Um, so that'll be a good game, though, over there at Rochester between those two teams. Groves and A&T. Groves will win that one pretty handily. A&T's really been struggling right now. So we'll see how that one goes there. Um, and then Adams and Stony Creek. I've been going back and forth with this one. I've been really going back and forth with this one. Um, 
you know, Stony Creek coming off that big win against Rochester. Um, they're starting to turn things around. They had that win against a &T. Um, Adams has lost two straight. Yes, they don't have Ryland Waters. But um, blowing a 17-6 lead is a really concerning method for me when I look at Adams. Um, so on this one here, I'm going to take the upset. Give me the upset. I'm taking Stony Creek here. Um, <laughs> I think Rumbler back. Along with Beekman there um, up front, I think Sam Fogler has a big game here. Um, we don't know where Adams is at after their two straight losses. I know the game's at Adams, but and Adams has played a tougher schedule, but I, I just don't know where they're at right now. Stony Creek, I think, is going to go in there, and I ain't going to pull off a big shocker here and um, shock Adams. It'll be interesting to see how this one goes, but I just don't know where Adams' mindset's at after that loss to Oxford. Blowing an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter, that's a big concern for me. Uh, so I'm going to take the Cougars in that one over the Highlanders um, in that one. Um, you got Lake Orion and Clarkston. Um, I'm taking Lake Orion in this one. I just think Lake Orion finds a way behind their offense. Tierra Hill plays well in this one. I don't know how the defense is going to match against the Bowman Twins. Um, I don't know how they're going to match with Brady Beck. Um, considering what West Bloomberg did to him. Um, so... I think Lake Orion's defense may be better equipped for Clarkson's offense. But, like I said, I mean, we don't know where this team mentally is at right now, especially what happened last week. Clarkson right now, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. Their defense has been playing well. But I think they're off. I think it's going to be their tallest task going up against a quarterback like T.R. Hill. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. And then our last game here, we got Oxford and West Bloomfield here. Um... If the West Bloomfield team against Lake Orion shows up in that game, I'm going to take West Bloomfield in that one against Oxford. I mean, I really think, you know, with Elijah Jackson, I think with, um, you know, with Elijah Durham, um, I think with um, Camp Flowers, Bo Jackson's really starting to sling it a little bit more. Um, and the weather forecast calling for a clear night, which does not favor Oxford at all. Um, Oxford team likes to pound the rock with Luke Johnson. Jack Hendricks is a solid quarterback. He'll be tested against that Laker defense. Um, but in this game here, I just think that the momentum, the emotional win that West Bloomfield had against Lake Orion, I think they're going to carry that over. And I really think they're going to do, um, I really think that they're going to create a um, create a mess at 2-2 um, two and two with everybody in the league here. I really expect the Red to be a 2-2 two and two mess. And all five teams clinching at least a share of the league title, which... I don't think it's ever happened in the OA before. Um, but it would be really interesting if all five teams um, clinch a share of the red title. I mean, like, I think that would be justified, um, you know, for if all five teams clinch a share of that title, <laughs> considering how good that league's been all year long. And also, it would be interesting because all the home teams would have won. You know what I mean? So that would be really interesting to see how that would go. So let's see what happens. Everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at saginawbyfortyfiftyatblogspot.com for the latest information on the OA. All right, everybody, I'm signing off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care, and I'll see you then. God bless. See you all next week.